My name is Sergei Shimko. I'm an architect with Magento Expert Consulting Group. I've been with Magento for over six years now. And today, I would like to talk to you about migration to Magento 2. Later on, we'll have a Q&A session with me and Yelena Leonova back on stage. All, all right, Let, when we think about uh, migration process, migration project, you can divide it basically in two pieces. Database uh, migration, which includes migration of your structure and data, uh, you know, tables and records in those tables. That's one piece. And another piece, and this one is closer to my heart as a software developer, uh, is code migration. Code migration consists of migrating your Magento framework and uh, native modules, third-party extensions that you may have and you probably have in your uh, installation, and then uh, your custom modules and custom themes. That's all included in code-based migration. So what tools uh, do we have to help us in uh, this uh, migration? Luckily for us, Magento released, uh, developed and released two tools. Uh, one is uh, data migration tool, another code migration tool to target these two tasks. These tools are available uh, on GitHub. They're just publicly available. They're kind of separate. Uh, they're not part of Magento 2 code base itself. They're separate tools. Here are the links where you can find those. Data migration tool, advanced tool, it targets the whole migration of the database. It's worth the whole different presentations. We're, uh, presentation, we're not gonna touch uh, this tool today. Feel free to go to GitHub and check it out. What we're gonna talk about is a code migration tool. As you can see from the slide, it targets uh, primarily migration of your own custom modules. But then the question is, what happens to these other pieces? So let's uh, take a look at them. Magento framework and native modules. It's, uh, no migration is required. You basically swap these modules underneath the application, just replace them. The only problem is if you have uh, modification of core files, but I hope nobody in the room modified their core, core files. It's, it's known as an evil thing to do. <laughs> ben Marks will come after you if you do it. <laughs> All right, third-party uh, extensions. So what, what about those? You would expect uh, vendors of these respective uh, extensions to migrate, migrate them, and you just kind of have to check what exactly from the marketplace you use, and you check with respective vendors, and you know they're already catching up. They're releasing more and more Magento 2 extensions. In the worst case, if you happen to use uh, extension that you know, is not popular and they decide to not support it anymore, it basically go, falls into the category of custom modules. You may just kind of choose to support it on your own, and then it becomes your custom module that you support only you. Custom themes, uh, as it was mentioned before, theming mechanisms have changed quite a bit in Magento 2. So at the moment, uh, the tool does not cover migration of themes. It's not that it's impossible to cover, but at the moment, it's not, it's not really covering. And we, can, we see a lot of merchants who use uh, the whole migration project as an opportunity to maybe go responsive and redesign their website anyway and take advantage of you know, theme inheritance and minimize uh, you know, the amount of code that they have in their theme. Two migrates modules, but what exactly from modules uh, it's gonna migrate? First of all, it's a directory structure of the module. And it's not just directories, it's pretty much all the files in these directories included, especially binary files like images, they will just you know, stay in those directories and they will go to the proper places uh, you know, according to Magento 2 uh, conventions. Then configuration files, those are XML files, will be migrated uh, to the format supported in Magento 2. Same with layout files. Uh, and my favorite one is PHP code. PHP code probably constitutes the majority of uh, code in your code base, most likely. So that's where you know, the most migration challenge is, is migration of PHP code. Everything else it may, you know, may be done kind of manually, but with PHP code, since there is a lot of it, you, you really may, may want to use the tool to do it, to help you to do it. All right, so now we know what the tool actually targets, so let's look at the tool itself, what it actually is. 
it's a command line tool uh, for developers, for Magento developers. I want to highlight it. So as a merchant, you probably, unless you have a background in computer science and Magento, you probably should not be you know, using the tool. You, you need to ask your developers to take a look at the tool, and they'll, they'll be able, Magento developers with Magento 1 and maybe a little bit Magento 2 expertise will be able to utilize the tool. So what it does, it accepts your code base, Magento 1 code base, does its magic, does transformation, transformations, and it generates uh, the code that is compatible with Magento 2 framework. But you know, nothing happens magically like that. There will be manual, uh, manual work required. After running the tool, you have to, developer will need to, you know, knowing what the code does, going back to the previous presentation, you need to know what test cases are, how it should behave. You, you can start verifying if these test cases pass or they don't pass. I think it will be kind of, kind of easier to verify because uh, it, a lot of times it will be either kind of crashing and the fix will be in one line or will just work. It's not like, oh, you know, taxes. Now you have a round in error in your tax calculation. No, your business logic, if it was uh, correct, it will, rem it will remain correct. All right, and the tool, uh, it, just one more point about uh, you know, the architecture of the tool, the way it's built, it's a static code analysis tool. It only analyzes your source code in terms of kind of text files, pretty much, or files and uh, directories in the file system. It's not gonna execute your source code. All right, before running the tool, uh, there is certain preparation that needs to be done. In fact, you have to prepare uh, directories in the file system. So those directories that you see on the screen I'll display just now, they, they don't have to be you know, positioned relatively to each other in the file system. There are just directories anywhere in the file system as you wish, but they have to have certain content. First one, obvious, the tool itself. You clone the tool from the, uh, from the GitHub or download it as a zip archive, you install the tool. Installation is simple, it, it's installed uh, with Composer. So you installed uh, the tool in the tool directory. That's good. Uh, now, the first important directory is the source directory. That's the directory where you should put all your custom modules that you want to migrate. You don't put there anything else, like Magento core files. Another catch is a lot of people use uh, Modman, uh, you know, in different format of packaging modules, which affects the directory structure of the module. So you have to use a native, Magento native uh, directory structure for this module. So it's only these custom modules. Then destination directory. Very simple, it's just empty directory. That's the directory where the tool will be putting its output. Initially, it's empty. Two more directories, Magento 1 directory. It's pretty much a vanilla Magento 1 uh, code base plus all, this, uh, all the custom source code, the same code that is, is in the source directory, all the modules that you want to migrate. Sometimes you may want to migrate kind of modules in isolation from their dependencies. So if this is the case, if you want to migrate a module for whatever reason, I don't know, just to try it, uh, but don't, don't want to migrate uh, its dependencies, uh, the tool still needs to have access to these dependencies and that's where you put these dependencies in M1 directory. It pretty much contains your like full, full Magento 1 code base. All right, and Magento 2 uh, directory, that's uh, just Magento 2 code base. That's it, uh, nothing tricky there. I want you to memorize uh, these uh, kind of directory names that I used. Uh, I'm gonna be using them throughout the presentation. To help you guys, that's how you can look at these directories. As an input, the tool accepts source directory, generates output in the destination directory, and it uses directories Magento 1 and Magento 2 just to look things up. Easy to notice that Source M1, M2 directories are read-only. Tool is not gonna mess up uh, you know, your source code. It will just read, analyze it, and generate output in the destination directory. So don't be afraid to break any code like this. The tool is intentionally built this way. All right, 
now we are ready to actually run the migration, run the tool. I wish I could tell you that it's a, a one-step process. Just run, run the tool, it's gonna do everything. But as of right now, the way tool is built, it's actually a set of tools. It's, it's a toolkit, it's not a tool, it's a toolkit that is a set of uh, other sub-tools. And the whole migration process is a five-step uh, process. Let's just name these steps and we'll go over each of these steps. Um, the very first step, uh, mapping generation. Second step, uh, directory structure migration. Then layout and configuration migration. They, you can kind of swap them around. They can be run, uh, you know, vice versa. And the very last step is PHP code migration. The very first step, mapping generation is an optional step, and we'll look at it, why it's optional. Directory structure, very important to be run kind of beforehand. All right, let's uh, look into the first step, mapping generation. It's kind of obvious what map means. Uh, I would define it, it just, it just a kind of the key value structure that defines how things have changed, you know, names of things have changed from Magento 1 to Magento 2. So these are files in the file system that hold this kind of structure to help the tool uh, to know how to rename things, pretty much. Uh, it covers module names, it covers class names, it covers uh, view files, it covers table names. That's, uh, and this will be a different maps, uh, different map files in the file system. Out of the box, the tool comes with pre-generated maps. So you don't really have to generate uh, any of those maps. Uh, the ones that the tool comes with, they're, they're good to go. Except for the case when you really want to migrate from some specific version, for example, from the older Magento 1 version. So the, you know, the maps, they're generated based on certain you know, fixed code base. So they were generated based on the latest latest or almost latest you know, code bases of Magento 1 and Magento 2. So that's the reason to regenerate it if you want, and, and it's an important step. It greatly influences the quality of the migration. You know, if something is not in these map files, the tool will you know, fail to recognize this thing. It will not know what to do with it. In order to regenerate map, this is the command that you need uh, to run uh, from the command line.